Sangba and the Jun Jun and the Kinkini, they're the ones that tell you what you are playing. So the rhythms, the part of the patterns that they're playing, they determine whether we're playing Lamban, whether we're playing Manjani, whether we're playing Sosane, whatever rhythm we're playing, they tell us what we're playing. The djembe's add color to it and, and, and communicate between the dancers, all of that kind of stuff, you know, and everybody want to jump on the djembe's, but these come first. So, and the dumbek is actually comes out of the tradition in Northeast Africa, in what is now known as Egypt, what we traditionally call Kemet. And if you listen to the tr traditional rhythms from that by the Nubian people, not by the Arabs who now dominate that area, because the Arabs are foreigners. They came in, they're part of the Asian invasion into Northeast Africa, but they are not indigenous. None of them Arabs had anything to do with building them pyramids. The pyramids were built thousands of years before they came into that region. We built that. And it's important to understand that when you talk about the Yorubas, when you talk about the Akan, when you talk about the Wolof, the Vi, and many other groups that we now found in Western Africa, they all said that they came from East Africa, that they came from the region of Kemet, that the massive migration began as the Asians began to invade Northeast Africa, a massive migration began to take place going from that region to West Africa, to Central Africa, to East, even into Mozambique and Zimbabwe. There was a, they began a migration that went in those different directions. The people, the Yorubas, when they got to that area now known as Yoruba land in the southwestern part of Nigeria, in Togo and Benin, there were Africans already there. There were other Africans there. When the Akan got there, there were African people there who had been there from time immemorial. And they integrated with the folks there. And there were no religious warfares. When people came into an area where there was a, 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 a regional variation on African spirituality, right. we're not talking about religion. Right. We're talking about spirituality, ways of being where we were in a harmonious relationship with the rest of nature. Yep. So there was no conflict. So they would just say, well, how do you recognize, you know, a, a set? Well, when they got there, they said, oh, we call her Yemanya. So when they came into the southern part of, of, of Sunugal, then they asked, they said, well, how do you recognize what we now know as Obatala? Or we call him Absakalai. They had regional, the only difference was language. So these systems are important because the, with the drum, a lot of people think that only the bala or only the core players were the ones who were the historians. No. The drummers were, re were responsible for knowing the history as well. Because every time you play a rhythm, every time you sing a traditional song, you're supposed to know what that song means and the history of it. That's a part of the reclamation process that we are doing now. As Africans, we're reclaiming our consciousness and our culture so that we can understand the tradition upon which jazz is built. Ashe. Upon which the blues is built, Ashe. Ashe. upon which gospel music is built, Ashe. reggae, samba, calypso, all of these rhythms that we're now playing over here, rumba, because the brothers and sisters in, in Cuba, they didn't call it salsa, they called it Afro-Cuban jazz, because they understood that the root was Africa, and that whatever we do over here, it is as Africans in the Western Hemisphere. And that is imperative for us to understand. Yeah. What we've been over here, what, four? Us. A little bit more than 400 years? Yeah. When mathematically, we got more than a million years of history on the other side of the water. How does that compete? You cannot lose everything that you, that you did over a million years in 400 years. It ain't gonna happen. We need to understand jazz as African classical music in the Western Hemisphere. We need to understand blues and R&B as African systems in the Western Hemisphere. Because the thing of it is, musicians were kidnapped too. Jollies were kidnapped too. These traditions did not just disappear because our systems prepared our children to participate in the society from the very beginning, from birth. 
rites of passage was not just something that the children went through, it was something the whole community went through. That's why they said that it takes a village to raise a child. And every time a group went through rites of passage, the whole community participated in that process and reconfirmed and reaffirmed our commitment to our ancestors and the cultural milieus upon which we were building. Each generation was supposed to add something to it. Our culture was not stagnant. But we suffered a lot in warfare. So when people ask us, how did we get in this position now? Because we forgot. Because we don't have the schools. The rights of passage programs weren't just something you did occasionally. These were our school systems. We weren't sending our children to foreigners and expecting them to produce Africans. See, that's the problem we got now. Jews may send their children to, to public schools, but after school and on the weekends, those children go to yeshiva. Because they understand no matter what you get from a foreigner, only Jews can produce Jews. Only Africans can produce Africans. <laughs>